uh, Benny uh, asked me to participate in this uh, uh, event under the, the banner uh, Innovation in Development, and I chose actually a small variation of that, which is Innovation for Development. Um, just by way of introduction, I'm bringing a bit of a Canadian perspective, so your neighbors up north, uh, a little bit uh, north of here. Um, and this is our uh, flagship building, which is a landmark in, in Toronto. Um, I thought what we start to, to look at is maybe a, a, a sort of a quick review of how the meaning of the word development has evolved over the last few decades. And uh, you know, I can see in the room a couple of uh, silver bags that uh, are my generation and can remember still probably the German Chancellor, Willy Brandt, explaining his vision of the development being, we're going to do the blueprint and we're going to export the uh, labor intensive processes to other countries. And this was not in any way secret and so on. It was like the, the new Marshall Plan and so on. Um, uh, that didn't uh, work as, as well as he intended. Uh, the, the next step was, okay, um, we need to, uh, to export our technology and uh, let's see if we can export appropriate technology. Appropriate meaning it was the second hand technology, third generation technology, the older tanks and, and fighter jets, etc. cetera. Uh, from there we went to um, uh, looking at a variety of sustainable uh, uh, development uh, schemes, uh, mostly sustainable in the sense of environmental. So a lot of the uh, USAID and um, International Development Research Center and so on uh, uh, we're trying to push you know, some form of sustainability into their programs, particularly in Africa um, and Latin America. Um, and, uh, and then beyond that, and as a result of that, they started seeing, okay, well, we can't do that without the people. So they started actually looking at the human factor. It started with the gender equity, with the women, you know, labor and the microfinancing actually emerged from starting to finance uh, uh, you know, s a small enterprise by, by women. Um, and finally, we ended up in, we need to reform the system, the political systems. So in a way, we started from the economy, technology, we went through the environmental piece and then came human, social and political reform. So a lot of effort, a number of decades long. And yet, if you think about it, our problems don't seem really better off. If anything, they seem more complicated, they seem you know, less likely to be resolved. So how, how do these problems look today? So first, we have to ac accept that all our critical challenges, you know, at the global scale, have this global nature both in cause and in effect. So it's not one place or one thing that caused them. So wh wherever the cause starts, it has a global scale, and wherever the impact hits, it has a global scale. Think of all of our major problems, whether climate change, whether uh, the, the how epidemics uh, start, uh, uh, you know, the, the economies, etc. They are all at a at a global uh, scale. Then, on top of that, they are highly interconnected and interdependent, right? So, so there are so many variables, and I don't mean just variables in the sense of uh, 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 economic variables and 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 uh, like engineering variables where you can have some uncertainty. But there's in addition to those large numbers of, of uh, variables, uncertainty about the human behavior, in particular the human intervention into those systems. So, uh, so whatever you do here, everybody speaks about the uh, uh, unintended consequences. Well, most of the policies of the past decades, if you thought about it, had really a lot of major uh, uh, unintended consequences. The, the next uh, 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 point that we have to, to uh, recognize in the present challenge, critical challenges globally is that they are often very complex and, uh, uh, and at times really what we call wicked, wicked problems. A wicked problem is a problem that, first of all, you're not sure that it has a, pro a, a solution. And two, even when you find the solution, you are not sure that you have found the solution. So like it doesn't have the stop conditions, as the mathematicians say, where the computer then stops you know, find, trying to find the solution. So this is a very peculiar type that demands completely different ways of, of thinking about uh, what we're doing. Uh, and because of that, those problems are today beyond the capacity of every discipline, of every entity, whether it is a region, uh, a learned institution like Harvard, you know, the United Nation, 193 nation and so on, 
Like all these institutions, it's beyond that capacity of, of these institutions that we built in, in the past. No single person, no single entity can actually resolve those problems because of that. And more importantly, what we're starting to see is that these challenges are setting up an absolute value, absolute threshold for how much runway we have, how much time we still have. So in the past, we used to compare with our own past performance. So what, how did we do last year? How do we do this year? Then it, it started becoming, well, let's compare with some other you know, competitors or other organizations. But now we have to think, is it going to be enough in order you know, to pass the wall that we seem to be you know, coming towards at high speed? So if these are the characteristics of the present challenges, what are the implications of that? Well, the first one is that development is global. Duh, everybody says that. But what does it mean, global? Well, from my perspective, it means global, including the developed countries. We have this notion that development is for emerging and developing economies, but it is actually as much needed because of the global nature and the intricacies, interdependencies for us as developing as developed uh, economies. So that's something that we need to think about because a lot of the things that we are doing today have severe implications on all the rest of the development spectrum. Um, we need an unprecedented level of collaboration. And I say unprecedented because so far we were blessed with a lot of freedoms, a lot of resources, a lot of runway, as we say. And we didn't have the need to really collaborate. So we could actually uh, 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 you know, compete against each other. Uh, the metaphor I'd like to use is like you are on a luxury cruise ship and everything is fine and you're sailing and you know, plenty of food. So if you went and competed of who is going to get to the table of the captain or who is going to get to the bridge, that's fine. Think about the same situation if the ship is, uh, ship is sinking, right? Or, and it's facing a tornado on top of that and there are some uh, uh, equipment failures on that luxury cruiser. How much sense does it make to go and compete of who's going to get to the captain's table and to the, to the bridge, right? So, so we need to switch radically from the mindset of competitiveness to a mindset of collaboration, which is not easy to do because it's very deeply ingrained. Um, we need to expand our uh, 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 tool set of innovation. And uh, you heard today about design thinking. Uh, uh, I think Benny uh, mentioned also a little bit about foresight, etc. There are a whole number uh, of things, but more importantly, we need to change how we are creating value. And I'll show you in a second an example of what I mean. Uh, and finally, the result of all these implications, in my view, is we need to redefine radically innovation in a different way. It has to be redefined in the context of our major global challenges and nothing else. This is what innovation should be. So here's the first one that I would like to show you. This is called the Dublin innovation types. There are 10 types of innovation. You know, this is just one measure of doing it. Just look at the volume of innovation efforts over the last uh, uh, 10 years and look at how much is in the product and product system and services and how much is uh, here in the business models and networking and you know, in the financer, financial world or here in the delivery of them, right? So memorize that. Look at now the cumulative value creation. So we had this high investment here. This is the value created. This is the value created from these other pieces. So that tells you where we should be actually you know, focusing our next efforts. If we talk innovation, we have to take the full spectrum of innovation and we have to look where we haven't looked before and reframe a lot of uh, those questions. Um, and uh, to come on the how we reframe then the definition of uh, innovation, uh, Here's one way to start with it, asking the question, innovation for whom and for what? That's the important question to ask, not just it is just innovation. So uh, this is a, a quote from uh, Elspeth Nielsen, you know, who is the rector of the Coding School of Design, which is a Nordic country. And she has recognized that you know, these democratic structure and political structure are not sufficient. So political innovation is one space that we really need to look at not just the technology and not just the economy and so on. Uh, another way is to, to ask also for whom, for what, is to think, are we innovating for the top of the pyramid, socially, economically, but also at the top of the pyramid of organizations, companies, or are we really thinking about the bottom of the pyramid? 
and this is a quote that's not very recent. It's from Franklin D. Roosevelt in a uh, radio speech at The Forgotten Man in 1932, where he recognized, you know, when you face these difficult times, that you have to go to the forgotten man at the bottom of the economic pyramid. And today we design gadgets and stuff that are for the elite and the golden tip of the pyramid. We're not really designing and focusing in a strategic way on the bottom of the pyramid. So I will leave you with this. Is this innovation for development? Is this technology, these things that we offer? Is this technology for development? Thank you.